Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm on a little early this afternoon, but I, I plan on finishing uh, this lesson up on rapture. As a Christian, what does this word mean to you? This will be, of course, part three. Hopefully, this will be the last night of this lesson. Uh, a little review. Uh, if anybody's not seen part one or two, back up and catch them. We talked about the church. We started out with rapture of the church. The definition of rapture, uh, what the Webster's Dictionary said it was, and you know, of course, rapture means transporting or taking away a believer from earth to heaven. Uh, we also talked about the word rapture. Rapture is not mentioned in the Bible nowhere, but there's several word or phrases that's mentioned in the Bible which describes this word rapture. Uh, I named four of them. Uh, one of them was a uh, snatching away, taken away, took him, or caught up. And as I said before, there's actually six men that's been raptured into the Bible. We've actually went through four of them. Tonight, we're going to start on the fifth one, and uh, we'll try to finish this lesson. I have two more individuals we'll talk about. Uh, number five will be philip everyone wants to turn with me to acts chapter 8 i'm going to read verses 26 through 40 then we'll back up and we'll talk about them briefly um the acts chapter 8 verse 26 through 40 but an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Get up and go south to the road that descends from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he got up and went, and there was an Ethiopian Enoch, a court official of Cadence, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all of her treasure. And he had come to Jerusalem to worship. And he was returning and sitting on his chariot and was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go up and join him in his chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, do you understand what you're reading? In other words, the spirit of God told uh, Philip to go uh, testify to this man, go, go tell this man about Jesus. And that's what uh, Philip is getting ready to do. All right, verse 31. And he said, well, how could I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture which he was reading was, he was led as a sheep to slaughter and as a lamb before his shearer is silent, so he does not open his mouth. Of course, this is prophesying about Jesus. Uh, this is back in the Old Testament, in Isaiah. Okay, hold on just a minute. Phone done something crazy here. Hold on. Sorry about that. I'll get back where I was at. All right. In humiliation, his judgment was taken away. Who will relate his generation? For his life is removed from the earth. The eunuch answered Philip and said, Please tell me of whom does this prophet say this is? Of himself or someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and began, and beginning from scripture, he preached Jesus to him. In other words, he told him about the Lord and what he went through. As they went along the road, they come up to some water, and the, and the eunuch said, Look, water, what prevents me from being baptized? So up to this point, we can see that Philip has told him how to get saved and the purpose of water baptism. And Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he ordered the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water, Philip as well as the eunuch, and he baptized him. 
Now, this is the part that I want you to pay close attention to. This is verse 39 and verse 40. The reason I read all them to you is to give you a little background of what Philip was actually doing. So they've stopped. He's, he's told him about Jesus. This eunuch's got saved. So it's time for baptism. So Philip and the eunuch enter the water for baptism. Verse 39. When they come up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away and the eunuch no longer saw him, but went on his way rejoicing. Pick up that word, snatched Philip away. Remember, Philip at this point was in Gaza, okay? But Philip found himself at Astos. And as he passed through, he kept preaching the gospel to all the cities until he came to Caesarea. Now, go to your Bible and read these two verses. Philip was immediately, instantaneously took, snatched away 25 miles ahead in the Astos. If you look it up, Gaza and Astos are 25 miles apart. So in other words, when Philip ducked the eunuch into the water, as he was coming out of the water, Philip was gone. Bible says right here, he snatched Philip away. In other words, and then verse 40 says, Philip found himself at Astos. He was transported. He was raptured. He Remember, what's the definition of rapture? Rapture is snatching away, taken away, took him or caught up. Here the Bible says he was snatched. God tr instantaneously transformed him, transported him 25 miles from one town to another. Now, as the angel of God told Philip to travel to Gaza to preach, and like I said, here Gaza was a town about three miles from the sea and the last town on the road into Egypt. It was located at the entrance of the wilderness. So God had a special mission here for Philip, and he wanted him there right then. So after Philip baptized the eunuch, and Philip and the eunuch were coming up out of the water, God raptured, snatched, transported, in other words, Philip instantly 25 miles ahead. So immediately, the Bible says, Philip found himself in Astos. Like I said, Astos was 25 miles ahead. So we see here, rapture is not a new thing, folks. Now, my last individual that I want to talk about is Paul. He's the sixth individual. And uh, we'll... Paul is a very unique individual. If you've never really studied about Paul, study Paul and study his life. He's, he was a remarkable individual. So in Acts, let's go to Acts chapter 14. We're, we're going to do a little bit of background on him here before we actually uh, read the scriptures showing that he was actually raptured. All right. In Icon, they entered the synagogue of the Jews. This is Acts 14, verse 1, together and spoke in such a manner that a large number of people believed both Jews and the Greeks. So Paul was preaching here. Icon Iconum, I'm sorry, is a city located in central Turkey or what you could, could, would consider ancient Asia Minor. Today, this city is called Konya. That's the name of the city today. Now, I want to read a verse to you here where he's preaching. Paul's preaching to the crowd here. So they become aware of it and fled to the cities of Laconia, Lystra, and Derby, and the surrounding area or region. So here, Paul had really upset this 
crowd of of uh, Jews and Gentiles because they were preaching about Jesus. And of course, during this time, they didn't believe Jesus. They didn't believe that Jesus died and rose again. So he was preaching about him. So Paul actually goes on to another city. And that's where, this is a part that I want to read to you all. And this really, and, and, and I've, got a, I've got a method to my madness here. So let's go to verse 19 and 20 in the same chapter. We'll jump through some of it here. Verse 19 and 20. But Jews came from Antioch and Iacom, or Iconum, and having won over the crowds, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. But while the disciples stood around him, he got up, and entered the city. The next day, he went away with Barnabas and Der to Derby. So Paul upset this crowd so much about preaching the gospel that they stoned him. And usually, what happened when somebody gets stoned in the Bible? They die. Well, Bible scholars believe today, and this is not biblical. This is Bible scholars belief. We do know he was stoned. Don't know if, if he died and the, the disciples prayed over him and he come back alive. We don't know that. We don't know if he was just badly injured and, and gets up and walks away. But here, Paul, this is what the Bible scholars actually believe. And like I said, this is not biblical. Here, Paul was actually killed by the stoning, and God rose Paul from the dead. Now, again, that's not biblical, but Bible scholars believe this, and they believe this is leading up to Paul when he makes his uh, statement about being raptured. So, again, I want to make myself clear that Paul was stoned. We don't know if he was stoned to death. We do know that he was stoned, and he was dragged out of the city and left for dead. That's that's all the Bible gives us. My Bible scholars, like I said again, believes that Paul was uh, actually killed and God raised him. Now, whether he did, whether he didn't, like I said, that's 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 not biblical. But we do know. Well, let's go look at this, and this is a part that I wanted to to cover with everyone. Everybody go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and we'll finish we'll finish this lesson up here in the next couple of minutes here. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 let's look at verses 1 through 4. Now this is Paul. Okay? Boasting is necessary though it is not prof uh, profitable, but I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body, I do not know, or out of the body, I do not know. God knows such a man was caught up to the third heaven. And I know how such a man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard impressible words, which a man is not permitted to speak. Well, this is Paul, folks. And this is Paul. And this is, Paul was actually, the Bible says here he was caught up. That's a form of rapture. So like I said, if you look back at the definition on rapture, that's a form of rapture. God called him up. God showed him something. And of course, Paul lived to tell about it and preached about it. So you look at it here in these verses. Paul tells right here. In other words, 14 years ago, he says, I don't know whether I was in the body. I was out of the body. I don't know. He said, God knows, but I was caught up to the third heaven. Now, 
if there's a third heaven, there's a, a first heaven and a second heaven, and we'll we'll discuss them in a minute. But he goes on to say in verse three again, whether in the body or apart from the body, I don't know. He he makes it very clear. Look, I don't know, but only God knows. But he does know where he went. I was caught up into paradise and heard impressible words which a man is not permitted to speak. Again, this is Second Corinthians twelve one through four. So we see here that this man also was raptured. And for and if you get into the study, and like I said, this is a lesson for another day. You'll get into the study, and you you'll realize why this man was such a remarkable man of God. Um, I mean, he he had a very close walk with God. Now, talking about the heavens. Paul says he was called up into the third heaven. All right. There's three heavens, and this is very short. The first heaven would be what a man could see with his naked eye. In other words, what you can actually see around you, the blue sky, uh, everything around you. The second heaven would be the stars and planets. That's something that we can't see with the naked eye, this is something that uh, you would have to have a tele telescope to see. And of course, the third heaven is the throne room of God. That's that's actually heaven. Just as Isaiah experienced the same thing that we talked about with Isaiah. So Isaiah was present in the throne room. So again, we know rapture, again, folks, is word it's not in the bible but trust me rapture's not a new thing the church is going to be raptured rapture will take place the last one and god's perfect number seven there'll be a seventh rapture that's going to be god's people that's going to be the church so again everybody wants to take a chance sit back and uh go through them look at them and I'll give you scripture to go by. Don't take my word for it. Study it out. Uh, hope everybody enjoyed uh, this lesson. Uh, starting next Tuesday, I'll start a new lesson on who is Jesus Christ and what is his purpose. We'll start that. We'll start, start from the birth of Christ and we'll... We'll actually go through the crucifixion. And uh, then hopefully after that, we'll discuss the disciples and what their role was and what type of deaths each one of them died. So I uh, hope everybody's enjoying the, the lessons. I hope everybody decides to uh, to continue to join and, and listen in. And, and like I said, I wish everyone... Uh, that would would please like and share so this lesson will get out and maybe it'll touch someone that needs to hear about the lord thank you everybody and everyone have a wonderful night and i will see you guys again uh, next tuesday evening thank you